We'll start up here in the front. There is a seven-way holder on the front of the unit that keeps the seven-way up off the ground so that it doesn't get corroded when you're not using it in the truck. It also has a battery disconnect so that if you wanted to save all the 12-volt juice that's in the battery, for the next time you get ready to use the trailer, all you have to do is turn the key to the off position, pull the key out, put the little black cap over the end of it. Saves all the juices left in the 12-volt battery from the time you pull the key out to the time you put it back in to use the vehicle again. It does have a place out here for a jumper box that you can hook to to get 12-volt to the trailer if you needed without being plugged into 110. Seven-way cord hooks here, runs down along the inside of the trailer to the back bumper plug. There is a manual way for each one of the jacks that you can manually come up through the cap here in the top with a 3 8 extension and a socket and manually crank them jacks up or down. Either way you need it to go on or off the vehicle. But there is a manual way to crank all four of the jacks up or down. We got our hooks for our fast guns to hook it to the vehicle. We're going to go into the outside of the on-demand hot water heater. It is in the off position now. When you get ready to use it, you'll turn it to on out here. Then when you turn the inside controls on, it will operate and run the water through it. it. Has a little sprinkler on the inside. I'll show you that when we get to the inside. But it actually shows you that it is working. The one thing bad about it is you gotta line up your hose for your exhaust. Fresh water tank will fill out here with a water hose. Doesn't have a monitor panel on the inside that shows you how full the tank is, so you can actually watch the tank on the inside too. But it has a city water connect right below it that you can hook to with a water hose and regulator and never have to fill the fresh tank off of it or water off the water pressure going to the city water connect. And the very bottom one is for the kitchen sink. For it to drain out, this cap has to be off. Allows the water to come through the sink, through the drain to the outside of the unit. Outside the furnace is next. It's gonna suck cold air in the bottom, hot air out the top. I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace for the simple fact this dauber screen is less than 20 bucks. It's $145 an hour for every hour that we have to take the furnace out to clean the mud daubers out of. So that $20 investment's worth its weight in gold if you ask me. Right above that, to the right, we have another 110 outlet that is GFI protected by the outlet on the inside. Pretty good sized compartment here on the outside. Does have magnets to hold the door up. Also has your port spray hook up out here for your outside shower. Comes in, makes in the connection right here. Gives you hot and cold running water to this side of the unit. Hot water on the left, cold water on the right. Stick the hose back in there. Does have a 30 amp power cord on it. Green light indicates that it has 110 power coming through it. Does have the lights on the end of the cord on this side over here. Green light indicates that it is proper. If it's not wired properly, it'll have the red light on it. it does have a sticker off to the side that shows you all that. We're gonna come back up to the stove top. The range inside, for the range to work properly, the two tabs have to be lifted out. Allows the flapper to flap. But when you're traveling down the road, you'll wanna push those back down and lock it in place. Has a little 16th inch tab on either side at the top. It'll sit there and flap till it breaks itself comes out. We also have a park cable hookup and a satellite hookup on the outside of the unit. If you're at a park that has cable, you can hook to that, or if you're at home, you can hook a cable to coax to that, and you have the same cable at the house that you do on your TV on the inside, or if you buy the satellite dish on the outside, it'll work the same way. You put your dish out, you'll have whatever your dish you pick up. We're going to step right past that. It does have another quick connect right there. We're going to come down in the where the termination valves are. As we look up in there, the black one is off to the top right hand side, and the gray one's right here in the front. You'll pull the black handle first, let all the nasties come out, it'll come out of the toilet tank. Then the little gray valve will help kind of clean out the inside of the hose too. And it will have a sewer hose, goes on, makes a quarter of a turn. Anytime it's not being used, you can always put the cap on. It does have a porch light on the back of the unit. It is prepped for a backup camera. It does have a ladder extension on the off door side. Up at the top, if you're going to buy the Lippert extendable ladder to put on it. If you're going up and checking the roof. We're gonna walk around and this side here. 
we have the two outside speakers with the blue lights. Anytime the LED lights is on on the owning, they'll have the blue lights on the speakers too. The top connection here is just an access panel to get into the back of the wiring from the 12 volt refrigerator. And then we have our propane bottle right down below that that is secured in the compartment. That's basically it on the outside. I always tell everybody too, the roof is the life expectancy of the trailer. You want to make sure the roof stays in pretty good shape. Check it every 90 days. Check it for cracks. Cracks are bubbles in the lap sealer up top. Here again, we're going to open up the door. We're going to step up into the unit. Watch your head. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the right hand side as we step in. The manual crank handle on the couch is for the awning. For any reason, the awning won't work on its own off the switch. There is a manual way that we can crank the awning in and out. All the lights inside the unit have to be turned on by hand. Have a little push button in the center of them. We're going to slide right in here to the bathroom. Does have a medicine cabinet up on the left hand side. Two, two shelves inside of it. Right down below it is the faucet for the shower. Hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side. Does have a storage compartment right down below it for dry goods. So you can add extra dry stuff in there if you don't want to get more wet from the shower. We have an exhaust fan up in the ceiling. Pull down on the handle. Does have a little black button on the back side of it that turns the fan on. Does have a little button on the right hand side of it that turns the light on. You do have your shower curtain here that you can put inside while you're taking the shower. Also has a single foot flush on the front of the toilet. Does have directions on the lid of how to use it. You need to fill it halfway full of water. Do your business. Push all the way down on the pedal. It fills and dumps into the holding tank. There is also a plug for the shower down at the bottom. Does have a magnet that holds it in place. Also has a strap Velcro for while you're traveling down the road. We're going to step in just past that. We're going to come into the monitor panel. On the monitor panel, it shows your battery life's fully charged. Anytime the 110 line's plugged in, it's going to show you the same thing. Fresh water tank, as it fills up, it'll show one third, two thirds full. Black tank, which is your toilet water, does the same thing one third, two thirds full. Gray will be your bathroom shower only. The red button on the right hand side of that turns the water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. Doesn't have tank heaters in it. Does have a living room light that turns the center roll of lights on. Here's your porch light and your awning lights. Awning will extend out. We'll go ahead and extend that awning out. I'll show you how that actually works because it does have two bars that come off to the side of it. on the inside gets folded backwards for stabilizing it there's one on each end it can also come out and come straight down and be pegged to the ground in front of it it's easier to put it onto the unit both of them work the same way I could go ahead and do that one over there so it's pretty simple loosens it up allows it to come out you're gonna lift up on the connection over here pull the leg out and let it slide right back up inside of itself click it back in place you're gonna bring it around Slide it right inside the holder and flip it back down. When the awning is all the way out, it does give you a little flack in the canvas. So once it's all the way out, you have to crank it back in just a little bit, puts a little tension on it, tightens up the canvas on it. We'll come back in, crank it back in. <coughs> It does have a fire escape window at the couch area since it could be folded out into a bed. Pretty simple, little red handle on the screen, pulls the screen loose from the window, little red handle down below it, opens it up. 
You can use it for breathing air into the unit or if the handle goes all the way through the window, it will let you access out through that window. All the paperwork that's in the unit is in the brown bag, was in the refrigerator. We're gonna come back down. It does have a thermostat, suburban furnace in it. It is in the off position right now. All you have to do to crank it up is turn it to the right hand side. Automatically the blower will come onto it. Blower's gonna run for about a minute, then it's gonna go through a lighting cycle to light it. Once it lights on gas, you can actually look through the second to the third bottom lever and you can actually see the yellow flame on the inside of it. There's a little clickety click. Yep, and you can see the flames right there. Yep. So we're gonna go ahead and shut that right back off. Even though we turn the gas off, it's gonna run for up to five minutes to cool the chamber down before it shuts itself off. We're gonna come down to the Insta Heat hot water heater, turns that on. Anytime that you're gonna run water through the faucets, it's gonna have a little shower head on this side here, indicating that the water is turned on. Right here in the center, it's gonna have a little fan showing that it's pulling uh, the fumes from the outside. And right to the right hand side, it will also have a little flame that indicates that it is lit on gas. You can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit <coughs> by the little button down below it. <coughs> Excuse me. This guy right and there. you can dial your temperature up and down. <coughs> We're going to come back up to the microwave. We're going to hit the reset button on it. It does have a clock button. Let's say it's 2.30. Hit the clock button again to the two center eyes that's flashing on it. <coughs> Did warm my coffee up in it. <coughs> right down below it, there is a light for the range hood, for the stove top, and a fan. For the fan to work properly, the two tabs have to be lifted out on the outside hood. It'll pull the smoke from the inside to the outside. On the stove top, you turn to the light position, light will on, light or match. <coughs> Adjust your temperature accordingly. I'm going to turn it back off. It has a pretty good size storage compartment underneath it that is your outside storage too. Pretty good size storage cabinet above it. The light above the sink has to be turned on by hand, a little push button in the center of it. But it gives you a 110 outlet that is Jeff. CI protected. Do you have a little sink strainer <coughs> for the kitchen sink? <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to take this little hidden compartment open right here. It does have an AGM battery installed in the unit from the factory. You can also see your water tank as it fills up. The little white valve on the right hand side there is for your winterizing of the unit. Gets turned in line with this line here, stuck down in the gallon of antifreeze. Kick the pump on, it will suck the antifreeze through the whole water system on the unit. <coughs> Up in the bedded area, we have an entertainment center for the TV. We have a charging system for uh, like a cigarette lighter or US, two USB ports to the right hand side of it. Right down below it is the TV antenna booster. Right down below that is the S cord. If you wanted to play DVD between the stereo and TV, if you hook the S cords up to the connection there on the wall and into the back of your TV, the stereo will play a DVD between the stereo and the TV. There is a 110 outlet up there for your TV to plug into. They also have a Wi-Fi extender prepped. All the lights in the master bedroom area have to be turned on by hand, a little push button in the center of them. We do have a smoke detector right here at the foot of the bed. <coughs> we have two USB ports at the head of the bed for charging cell phones or CPACs. The wooden connection laying on top of the mattress is the tabletop that goes to the pedestal here in front of the couch that manually goes in here through the top, tighten up the knob here. You can adjust it out so you can eat at the couch area. 
does fold back out of the way. We do have the inside of the ice box. Controls for it are in the upper right hand corner. I think it goes from one to six setting on it. One to seven. One to seven. Mm -hmm. But uh, we wanted to make ice in the freezer part of it, but you don't want the stuff in the bottom drawers to freeze either. So I think I wrote it at about six when I first started the PDI on the trailer. You are correct, sir. We're gonna go right back up to the AC right above us. You wanna run it on the coldest temperature. It does not have the heat option strip in it. You can add it to it later if you want it. But you have the low, medium, and high on the cool side. Fits out both sides there, both ends. It also has the foot pull down that lets it go straight down into the unit. If you don't want it on the AC, you can use it on the fan side only. It just circulates the air throughout the unit. We also have another 110 outlet here by the right side of the couch and a USB port for charging cell phones. We do have two speakers in the master bedroom area. Two speakers underneath the cabinets here above the couch. We also have a fantastic fan above the master bed. Pull down on the black neural knob, cranks the vent up. There's two buttons on the back side of it closest to us. One operates the fan from one to four settings. The other one turns the fan off. Couch will butterfly down into a bed. We have to remove the tabletop here to fold it down into a bed. It's pretty simple. Pull up on the bottom, folds out, lays down. We do have the breaker box in behind us and our digital solar panel readout right there at the top. Tells you what the solar panels are putting out to the battery. And right down below that is your 110 breakers and your car fuses in the breaker box itself. That breaker box will also determine between a lead-based battery and an AGM battery. It will set it, automatically set itself for whatever battery you have in it. But it does come from the factory with the AGM battery. The 110 outlet right there at the step is your GFCI outlet that controls all seven of the 110 outlets inside the trailer and the outside of the trailer. And then right down below that is the carbon monoxide LP detector. For any reason you would get lp inside the trailer it gives you four little annoying beeps two times and if it smells carbon monoxide it gives you four beeps longer beeps two times in a row but that's basically about everything on your unit if you have any questions i'll try to answer them the best that i can and thank you for your time